Ferris Bueller. Apparently, that's English Beat, March of the Swivel Heads. Um, so, th this is the De Art Aurora. And if you remember way back, in your way back, way back machine, if you just got to see your reason in the last like year, you're not going to remember it because I have this, the De Art Aquila 2. And the thing is, I've had this for years. I think I did review this at my old, reviewed this at my old department. And never once, not once, have I been like, you know what, I should sell this in the yard sale. It's a Dakham combo. Like, I've got fuckloads of Dakham combos. I've got the IFI Neo, IDSD. I've got the new DX7 Pro. I had the old DX. I had so many things come and go, combos, that it's like, I should just sell this one. What makes this one special? Was it the shape? Was it the fact that it was like angled in on the side with these little lips and then maybe the feet having these weird little knobs? Like, I don't know. Something about this da art, DA squiggly line art Aquila 2, um, just made me want to keep it and use. I used it occasionally. I'd pull it out and be like, you know what? I just need a decent DAC. You've got your basic inputs, AES, uh, balance outputs, RCA outputs. And I had this headphone amp. And this knob, this digital knob and the, the clicky screen, and it had settings, which I can't recall at the moment, but it had like specific settings that actually made it sound different. That was another thing. It sounded warm. This sounded nicer than like every other fucking thing I had hanging around. It's like, you know what? I'll keep it. Once it was silver and I liked it, I ended up putting this wifey sticker on it today to solidify it. Um, although I'm not saying I won't sell things in yard sales, which come up on the first or the 10th of every month on my Patreon and subscribe star. If you want to buy shit that I'm done with, like maybe this, or maybe this, but probably not that, and probably definitely not that, but definitely not my dark voice. But if you want that, first to the 10th of every month, um, Patreon or subscribe star, I sell shit that either companies have sent to me, or that have been sitting around and I'm not using it, or people have donated to the channel. Like, here it is, let's put this in the yard sale, and give me 10%. I'm like, fine, fine, whatever, fine. Um, check that out, also. Um, so here's the Art Aurora. This one was more money. This was like a seven, eight hundred. This was like an eight or nine hundred dollars. This was not a cheapy. This one's a little bit more affordable, five twenty. And I know it's five twenty because I looked it up. It was sent to me directly from the manufacturer. So I looked at where the hell did I sell this? A uh, Hi-Fi Go, uh, Shenzhen Audio, uh, Aoshida. Uh, they don't sell it on Linsol, but there's another one. They said they don't sell it on Amazon either. Uh, we're going to talk about that. What that is, because really that's the competition. It's actually on. Um, AliExpress in red. It's on red in these places. So I got the black one. There's a silver one which matches that one. And then there's a fucking red one. And why fathom they didn't send me a red one? I don't understand. Think about the white one. I had to pick up for the red one. So small unit, very very reminiscent. I, I was gonna make this a single review of like I'm just gonna review this. But then I'm like, well I gotta test the outputs because it's a DAC amp combo. So the amplifier sections in front, three four point four quarter inch uh, XLR. And then the back has uh, XLR, RCA. We've got RCA outs, RCA ins, which is rare. Having an analog input for a DACM combo is rare. So if you're looking for that, here you go. Um, you've got coaxial input, you've got fiber optic, you've got USB, which I've got this DD Hi-Fi cable I want to show off so fucking bad because it's, it's full-size USB-A to USB-C, and I was trying it on my phone, and it worked for like 10 seconds. Then my phone was like, I'm gonna try to charge this DAC. And I'm like, no phone, please don't. And so I can't get to play audio anymore. We've got a power switch where you gotta talk about real bad, and then here's your transformer input. Of course, the transformer is this. This is using a Meanwell switching adapter. What's my specs? 12 volt, five amp, which means you can run it on your car. Um, so there's the back of it. It's it's pretty pretty packed. There's also this sticker here, which we got to talk about with that CCC in it. Um, where do you, where do you want to start? Let's do the front. Let's do the operations. Let's do order of operations. Nice white food. Great, great. You like it? Great. A link to the sticker packs. I get them out of. They got like hundreds of sticker packs. Here's your inputs. Here's your volume knob. Um, step one. What the fuck? Come on, guys. Indication. Indication, I got the dark voice here. What about the dark voice? I haven't had the dark voice out in months, but the dark voice out, so I'll put this to test it. This was a digital knob. It was fine, it didn't have any indication. This, you see that little black notch right, right? Do I have a fucking thing to point it, like right here? See that little black notch? That's all you see. And when it's down, it's here, so you literally can't see shit if you're at any sort of normal angle. 
And when you turn it, you get to about there, then you can kind of see it showing up. This is four watts a channel out of the balanced. Four watts. It's not a little, that's a lot. If you're using IEMs with this, I don't. All right, we, let's, let's cut to the actual review. There's no high low gain on this. And it's four watts a channel and it's got a bad indicator. So first thing we're gonna do is we're, I brought a, a series of markers. I've got a series of markers here. I brought the, the silver marker to mark the indicator because we're gonna make this so you can see it. And I bought three black markers. Because if you go to the, any of the websites, the very first bullet point on features is MQA. So, of course, they've painted on a fucking MQA logo, which we have to get rid of. And I have um, some choices. I've got this nice Japanese Posca paint marker. I bought this Sharpie writes on fucking anything paint marker. And there's a standard uh, permanent Sharpie marker. These tend to look a little more um, purple when they dry. So I think I'm going to go with probably the Posca. Yeah. Let's try the Posca out. Ooh, it's nice and wet. I'm showing you how to modify your equipment to make it sound better. Um, if you're new to the, I could actually try to draw actually on the MQA. If you're new to this channel and you don't understand my thoughts and feelings on MQA, please check out Golden Sound's video. I could leave the logo. Now nah, the logo still represents them, that sucks. I don't have waifu stickers small enough to just cover all the MQA logos. But there you go. We'll let that dry a little bit. Um, yeah, don't. Not even once. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hate on this unit because it supports MQA. We could all do that separately in our own little ways. Because I do fucking love the D Art Aquila 2. And I wanna know if that love and that sound comes to the D Art Aurora, which is a more affordable $520 unit. Which oh we gotta we gotta draw some more shit in it. Hold on. We're not done drawing on it. So we're gonna put our volume up to noon. And I need to have the indicator like here, so I'm just gonna draw a nice fat fucking silver line. Like there we go. A little, little dabbing. It's a happy little tree. I'm gonna draw a happy little indicator there. Boom, 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 boom. It's beautiful fucking artwork. If I sell this at a yard sale, you'll get it with a beautiful indicator. So now I can look at it and go, oh, the volume is down versus the volume is mysteriously fucking insanely high. It gets loud. It is a power. I had to look up that power unit because I was like, this thing is like, huh? Oh, no, fuck. So now I know it's down. So now I can plug my very expensive and very sensitive TH909s into it. And I can feel confident that it's not, although it's so far down. Hold on, I gotta see something. Hold on. Okay, good. I was about to say, if it was like so far down, but also maximum was so far down, it'd be like, that would be like, that would be a real, like, no. But it goes so far down. It's not like here. It starts basically at like, if you know how the clock works, noon, three o'clock, six o'clock. It's like six thirty. But then she she stops. She maxes out at like like was that ten? No, ten's there. That's three four. She maxes out at like four o'clock. Um, oh look how nice that MQA logo went away. Not quite as shiny as it needs to be, but it'll it'll just it vanishes when you're like this. One of the most interesting things about this unit. And I'm gonna compare against this own X1S GT with Bluetooth, because I thought I had to until I realized uh, region locking. Um, the way you control it is, I, so there's no power, so it's very fucking dirt simple. Dirt simple. Dirt. Knob, switch. Switch, momentary switch that you have to click down. I fucking love this system. That's awesome. There's something spectacular about being able to like just go click feels like I'm on an old telephone system in like the 1930s and it's like hold on we gotta switch you out and it swaps between these orange LEDs it's not blue everyone it's not blue it's not blue you're the only motherfucking blue thing actually no you're also blue Andromeda I have the musician Andromeda here as my big Output for the uh, XLRs. I should be using speakers, but you know, fuck it. And I got the dark voice, which is blue. Um, so it gets to switch between these inputs USB, which I got working on my phone and then it stopped working. God bless this DD Hi Fi wire, but it doesn't work. Coaxial, which I took out to plug into the OON X1S. Optical, which when you switch between it, it actually does fade up which is nice, it isn't just blant blatantly like, clicking over. You don't have much time to react, but if you notice something is getting real loud within the, like, the first second, you can sort of crank it lower. A Bluetooth setting, BT, 
And then Line, which is a slightly dimmer uh, orange, which I have it coming from another deck down there. We won't talk about that deck. That's a shh, shh. That's a shh, shh deck, but it's got the same source. So Pearl Gems, Why Go is playing, same as everything. Um, I love this switch, I really do. I love the feel of this knob, this knurled metal, the same as that one, I love it. It's a feel thing. The box is doing that same thing where it's like slightly angled with the little corner. It just feels special, just like the own X1S GT feels special. It's got this slight curve on the top of it. It's got these divots down the side. Dirt simple, we got a knob, well indicated knob. I didn't have to draw on this one. And it's got one button. Instead of a switch that goes ka-chunk, ka-chunk, it's got a switch that goes boom, 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 boom. This, however, also has the ability to double press and change to the blue fl flash. It goes from red, double flash blue. That's default mode, default headphone mode, uh, purity mode, purity headphone mode, or something like that, direct or linear. So you can actually get a little bit of a sound difference out of this unit. No high-low gain, but this is only 1.6 watts per channel out of the balance. This is four. So this is definitely, this is only $320. This is $520. So we're as much as that's like $200 apart, we're, we're going to still compare them. The reason I took out this one is because it was sitting on my desk here. And I actually have, this is the fucking third one of, the second one of these? Second one of these? Third one of these? I've got a lot of these. I just kept sending them. Like different companies kept sending them and I'm like, please stop. Please stop, but don't, because I love it. One of them is up on my desk and my actual review, on my desk that I work on. One of them is on the shelf back there. And this one was special and new because it has Bluetooth. See Bluetooth antenna for Bluetooth. And I'm like, great, this has USB, coaxial, optical, Bluetooth in line. I can compare this, very simple, very small, similarly sized, slightly more expensive thing against this other Bluetooth thing. Turns out, if I forget which exact website it was, because there's fucking 10 of them. I think it might have been the Hi-Fi Go one. Where are we going? Uh, 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 scroll, scroll, scroll. Yeah, so here, Bluetooth antenna. Wait. Bluetooth feature only available to selected countries due to regulatory requirements. Remember that sticker on the back? That's literally covering the hole where the, I could feel the hole underneath it. So this doesn't have Bluetooth, yet you still get to pick it Boom, you still get to pick Bluetooth, and then it sits there doing nothing. I literally put it on BT, and I was like on my phone, like... I had to hold it down, because there's no other way to interact with it. Um, the other issue with this unit is... Okay, I could, I could forgive it not having Bluetooth, and that's probably real hard for them to get out the front. Um, whatever the regulatory issue is, fucking accomplish it so you can have Bluetooth in America. I'm assuming this is an America thing. But the other issue is you can't turn this unit off. I mean, you can, not from the front. And it's like, well, Zeos, you've had other issues where units are all, like the own X1S GT cannot be turned off from the front. There's no power. You can't hold the button. You can't double tap it. It just is on. But this is cool, like literally cold to the touch. And this is warm. And it's not like a sandwich warmer, but it's just warm. And I'd kind of want to turn it off at night. The problem is that off switch is very small. And even if I didn't have this USB, this beautiful DD Hi-Fi USB, which I, I'm gonna get this working in a review at some point, I swear to fuck, stay there, baby. Even with that gone, this power plug from the thing is sort of in the way and it's so tiny, it's like. So if you're using USB, it's basically impossible. You can't get your finger between the USB plug, no matter the size of it, and the power plug. So it's just, it's an on all, all the time unit. They don't want you to shut it off. They would make it convenient. There's been a couple of units where I got to reach around the back. Like here, I can reach around the back to this one because it's literally here on top. And I could turn it off or I can turn it on. Um, the difference between these two, this has balanced outputs. This doesn't have balanced output. This does, however, have fixed line outputs and pre-amp line outputs at the same time. So you could hook it up and it has the outputs from the front and outputs from the back and outputs from the preamp all at the same time. There's no switching. No switch, no switching, switching, no switching. It's got a, a world clock, which I don't really, I know it made it sound a little bit better, like just a, but it's like a $300 unit to buy that thing, to put it in there. And it's like, you understand, right? You understand the world clock is like a world clock. Great. If everything had it, I'd be down. I'd have a distribution amp and everything else, but it's not. So you, you lose balanced output on this, although you still have balanced output in the front. You only have a 4.4 here with a quarter inch. This has, put you down. This has a 4.4, a quarter inch, 
and a full out balance stack in the front or balanced uh, four, four pin in the front. I'm gonna turn this back on now. You turn it on, it remembers, you click it. Uh, the DAC output, let's get to that first. I think the DAC in this is perfectly fine. It's a $500 unit. It's not the focus of the unit. That's like, oh, it's got to have the greatest DAC. It's good enough. And with DACs, good enough is usually good enough. I know that seems weird, but try, try to follow me on it. So I've got the Musician Andromeda here, and I was uh, swapping a couple different headphones. I've got these, uh, these are the, uh, hold please. Where are they? The SJY, these are the newest revision of the high nodes I'm testing for them. So we've got a couple different changes here. If you didn't see my review of the high nodes, this was a Kickstarter he launched as soon as he started shipping the old one. So like no one paid attention because you got to have the other one come out, but he's still working on them constantly. Different plates, different panels, different backing, uh, different wire. Where am I going? Where am I going? How do I play this? Okay, here's a problem. So the line in, I have the line in currently activated from another DAC into this unit. It will not route that out to do other things. So if you want to use this as a preamp for speakers and you have the line in being used, say off as you know, three and a half millimeter off your phone or something, of course you can't Bluetooth, um, it won't work. So it'll only take digital inputs and make it an output because it has to use the DAC. You're accessing the DAC. So you can't use the line. So you got to switch it around to have the optical in here. Fades up. Now I'm listening to speakers, well, headphones, whatever you want to call them. Ear head speaks. Knowing this amp, and knowing this amp, although I don't know if I would ever judge a DAC based on a, on a, on a dark voice, DAC's fine. DAC's just fine. However, when I switch to line, if I'm listening to, let's plug these into here for a second. I get a little more width out of the other DAC I'm using. It's a good Shelly Labs DAC, but it's a little more, it's a little, just a little bit, a little bit wider out of the headphone out of this. So is that the amp differences? Is that the DAC differences? Because I should be using the same amp. Like if I'm doing that, and then I go click, click, click. Wait, it might not be as obvious on this headphone. Good, powerful, strong, right in front of me, vocals. Focal. Switch, switch. It's a competent DAC. It's a competent DAC because that allows me to check the DAC. It's very rare I get to do that in a DAC M combo. Usually you're stuck, but I could actually feed it a different DAC and assess, okay, external DAC, internal DAC, external DAC, internal DAC. So now I'm listening to the amp on its own. Not as warm as the Aquila 2, because I think that's a price thing. I think it might be as powerful though. But put this down put these down how do we want to break this down how do we want to break this down because i want to finish this review right now right now this fucking two seconds worth this is 200 dollars less it has less power and has no balance out but it has bluetooth and it has either an option for bluetooth or no bluetooth but this has the power the sound fuck which one? Which one? Which one? This one sort of com this one sort of completes a desk in its entirety. You get your outputs. Oh, it does. Oh, let me plug in my uh, NDH thirties. Where, where where what else can play sound so I could show you that it does this? Put plug these high notes back in. Oh, three legs. Three legs is not the way to go. By the way, anyone who's making equipment, I like three legs because it doesn't do a thing, but. We're on line, it won't output line. I gotta go back to optical. Boom, we got things. Both will play, both will play. But it's not a preamp out. So it's a line out. So you can't, they showed me using it for speakers but that doesn't make any sense if it's a fixed line out. If the volume doesn't affect that, then it's not really for speakers. I was hooking up speakers, my speakers would have gone click. There's no switch to turn it into a preamp instead of a line out into a pre-out. It just is. I like this unit. I like this unit. I, I gave it a sticker on it. I like this unit. 
it just for five hundred and twenty dollars. I love that song too. For that five hundred and twenty dollars, it's got MQA logos on it, which I don't mind. We could erase those. That erase them from existence. I'm sure it'll be four hundred and fifty dollars if it didn't have that. We've got the coolest switch, but it's got a Bluetooth thing that isn't working in my country. Maybe it works in your country. You need to add an indicator with a marker. I love the sexiness of the size. I love this little angularity of it. It fits beautifully on a desk, just, just next to other equipment. It just fits. But the Aoun X1 SGT exists here already in this space. I don't know if I'd buy this. I'm going to link to it five times, because there's like five sites that have it. <sighs> They're like brothers. They even have the little like indicators, arrows that go down. Did I, did I not? Did I, did I not? Hold on. Oh, yeah. So this is using the uh, RCA out onto this. Oh, she bright. I don't know. It could get bright. If I had to keep one and sell one, I'd probably keep the Aquila too. Keep this girl. She's been in my life for too long now. But she does some special shit. And this, I'd probably dump. I'd have three of these. I'll probably sell one of those too. I don't know. Yard sales. First to the 10th of every month. Remember that. Am I done? I'm, I'm just getting bored of talking about this. There's nothing else to talk about. I'm just extending this time of this video for no reason. Because longer videos aren't better for me. All right, I'm done. I'm done. You got the spiel at the beginning. Yard sales and Patreon and support and hi fi go and I'll see you at SoCal Can Jam and then at Capital Audio Fest and then wherever else I want to be. I'm going to go take a nap. I'm going to go take a nap. I'm going to go take some coffee and a nap. <sighs> I want to love you so bad. I just want to love you so bad. Why can't I love you so bad?